Hey founders, have you ever gone into a pitch or a presentation and the technology gods are just not smiling on you that day? You just can't get the PowerPoint to work or that you know the whole AV system is glitching out on you. How do you handle that in a way that leaves you looking as good or maybe even better than you would have if everything had gone smoothly? I'll let you know my tips for handling that in this, what I think will be a short episode of Feel the Boot. Welcome to Feel the Boot, the science of startups. I'm your host, Lance Cottrell, and I am here to help you build your startup. I've done it myself, and I've helped countless other founders along this difficult path. It can be a vertical learning curve, and there's an amazing number of challenges that you'll need to overcome, and so much knowledge you need to learn. It's really ridiculous to expect anyone to be able to bring it on all by themselves, and that's why I created this channel. I remember how difficult it was, and I want to help the next generation of founders do it better and more easily. This episode is part of our playlist on pitching. I'll put a card up there where you can find all the other episodes on the pitching process. We've also have playlists on a number of other topics relevant to founders from getting started, pitching, of course, fundraising, running your business, information that you need to know as a founder and interviews with other founders and experts in the field. I'll put a link to the channel so you can access all of that content and find exactly what you need. I recently saw a pitch go way off the rails because of technical problems. The founder was standing in front of the angel group and reading the pitch off his phone, and it turns out that for some reason, the wrong version of his slide deck had got it loaded onto our computer for the presentation. And he got extremely flustered. He was waiting for our admin to try to find and put in the right version of the deck. And in the meantime, seconds are going by, right? There's not a lot of time allocated to each one of the presenters and time wasted with technology counts against you. Right? We have a fixed agenda and we need to get through it. So you don't just get to restart the clock as soon as everything's perfect. And eventually he did stumble through it, but he was way off his game because the notes he had on the phone didn't match up with the slides he was reading. And so it was awkward. He kept scrolling back and forth. He's lost in his deck trying to work out where he was going. It looked very unprofessional. And at the end of the day, he did not get any interest from the group. I want to help you prevent that from happening because really tech glitches are inevitable. How you react to them is under your control. There are two aspects to coming out of these glitchy situations smelling like roses. And the first lies in the preparation, making sure you've done the homework in advance to be able to pull it off. And the second is what you do in the moment when things start to go wrong. I'll cover both of those here. So in the moment, when you realize that the technology is not working for you, the key is don't panic. Just stop for a moment, take a deep breath and shut your mouth. Resist the urge to fill the dead air with random blather. Give the people a sec to get it working. See if they can get it resolved. If you've got useful information to share, you can start talking ab about your business to the group, the sort of things you might say over the title or the first intro slide. But don't rush. Don't try to fix the problem yourself because you want to be staying front and center and communicating with the audience. And if Whoever is in charge of getting this working can't get it working in under a minute. Just move on. S continue on with your pitch and deliver it straight up as though that's what you had intended all along. If at some point the deck comes back online, you can quickly forward through to where you were if you've been giving it in exactly the same order and just continue on from there. But really, if you're doing a good job without the slides, you might as well just finish out the entire presentation without the slides. I've got to tell you, it really looks impressive to your audience that you can do it without a crutch. One important key is while they're working to fix the tech problem, ask them to turn off the projector. There's nothing more distracting than trying to listen to a speaker while you're seeing some admin flail around on the screen, clicking on everything in sight, trying to get the slides working again. Right? Everyone's feeling for them and caught up in the narrative of this person trying to solve this technical problem under time pressure, but that's not the narrative you want to share. You want to share the narrative about your amazing business. So once things start to go wrong, get that that screen turned off so you can be the center of attention going forward. 
Some of my best presentations have happened when I've lost AV. I remember once I was at a large law enforcement conference and I was standing in front of several hundred government law enforcement officials and when I got up there, they plugged in my laptop and it would not talk to the projector. And I gave it about 30 seconds before I just went with the, the talk. It was about a 20 minute talk, but I knew my material and it actually allowed me to be more free. I wasn't sort of looking back up behind me. I could walk around the stage. I didn't need to worry about blocking the screen. And the audience really loved it because it felt more spontaneous and more personal than a fully prepared presentation often does. Now, of course, this only works if you can, in fact, deliver your talk without your deck and speaking notes. And that's where the other side of this comes in, preparation and rehearsal. You have to know your talk inside and out and practice being able to do it without notes and even without the slides. And really, it all starts with the kind of deck you're building. If you're building the right kind of deck, which is not full of words, where the slides exist to support and amplify the points you're making, but not to make the points for you, then if the slides aren't there, you're still making the points. The narrative hangs together, all the information is there. You don't have the cute image or maybe the number hovering uh, over your head that's showing revenue or growth or total market size or whatever it is, but you're gonna say those words anyway, and so, if the audience doesn't need the slides to understand what you're saying, when the slides suddenly disappear, you can still give a coherent presentation. The next step is to break away from using notes with your presentation. Stop reading the presenter notes on your presentation screen. Don't have all of the points you wanna make written down on a phone, right? As I said, anytime you get thrown off and get out of order, if you're using notes, now you suddenly need to find the notes for the spot you're in. Or if someone asks you a question or wants to go back to a previous slide, if you don't know that cold, you're suddenly flipping through the notes, that looks panicked, that looks disorganized. So start off by making sure that you know exactly what you want to say on every single slide in the deck, what points you're going to make, not necessarily word for word because that starts to sound really stilted and static, but in general, here's the thing I want to say. And also that helps prevent you from wandering all over the place and saying all kinds of pointless things, right? You want to stay on point and on topic. And once you can do that with the slides, maybe you can move on to the next step. So once you have it down with the slides, the next step is to do it without the slides. This can be pretty challenging because one of the advantages that slides have is it provides a mental cue. Each time you hit that clicker, the new slide comes up, you're like, oh yeah, that was the next thing I was supposed to talk about. When you've got to do it without slides, now you need to come up with some memorization techniques. And there are a number of tools that you can use to help you memorize the order and content and key points that you're gonna make in your presentation. Personally, when I've got to memorize really tightly a big presentation, I use the memory palace technique, which allows me to mentally walk through a space and see each one of the topics I need to hit and go through it. That works really well for me. Whatever tools you can use, I encourage you though to really practice and practice and practice and practice. It takes a lot of repetition to get to the point where even without the slides, you can bring your presentation in on time and hit all the points that you wanted to make in a coherent way so the entire presentation flows. Now, once you give up the slides, I will allow maybe you to have a page with some bullet points on it. It should all fit on one page in large font, something that you can read at arm's length, right? Because I don't want you scrambling around, trying to find where you were, remembering which spot you were at. But if there's just sort of a few key transitions, big points that you wanna make sure you're hitting in a certain order, that can be useful as a backup. And so you can just have that in your pocket. So if you had planned to do the pitch with slides and suddenly you don't have slides, you do have this reference that will help keep you on topic as you go through the presentation. But if you can do it without that, even better. 
Because that's what I was saying before, notes really can hurt you. As soon as you get confused or lose your place in the notes, now you're trying to find out where you were and you don't look like you have command of the material. And one of the things we all look for in a CEO is someone who knows their business inside and out. There should be almost nothing about the business that you don't have familiarity with. There might be some number that you could guess, but say, you know, I think it's roughly this, I'll get back to you. But you know, beyond that, you should know it cold and the notes getting out of order, getting out of sync with your other thing. If someone asks a question and diverts, you have to jump ahead or jump back in the deck. You know, you get off the rails of the presentation you'd planned. Suddenly, if you need those notes, they're a huge liability. I know that I'm ready to do this when I get to a spot that Bruce Lee used to call mind like water. You're in a relaxed state and you're able to quickly react and conform to any situation that confronts you. Because at this point, you're the master of your pitch. And no matter how you have to deliver it, you can deliver it clearly in a way that will impress your audience. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope you found it useful. And if you did, please give it a like. That tells YouTube that this is the kind of content you'd like to see and helps show you more of it and tells them that this is the sort of content that other people like you would like to see. And of course, I'm trying to help as many founders as I can. If you've enjoyed a bunch of these, I'd appreciate it if you could go a step further and subscribe and ring that bell. That'll make sure that you get alerted to all the future episodes that come out, but it also makes a huge difference to the success of this channel, and I would really appreciate it. Thanks. Now, if you'd like to get one-on-one -on -one to consulting or advising with me, come over to feeltheboot.com and sign up for our mailing list. In each new newsletter that I send out, I include a link to get on my Calendly so you can get one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. I love talking to founders. I learn so much about all the different interesting businesses that you're launching, and I can help you with any issues you're encountering in your startup. So, till next time, ciao.